this is JC Sutherland, Product Manager for Trigger Figure Pro. And in this video, we're going to do some advanced functions on the Trigger Figure Pro. We're going to set up a multi track recording in Pro Tools and control that multi track recording by setting up the Trigger Figure Pro to send out different MIDI channels. Because this is so flexible, you can send different sections of different banks out different channels and sequence an entire song just from this with multiple instruments. So let me show you what's going on in the hardware first. On the Trigger Figure Pro, you'll see that I have preset 26 D minor Pro Tools. How I created that preset is I first went to the factory. D minor key because it's the saddest of all keys. I loaded that. I'll actually load this one to show you what I did. I first started in pad focus. And you'll see the mapping is to arsenal. However, if you were in the D key, the mapping would all be to MIDI. I just switched this from MIDI to arsenal and then exited out. So now bank one is ready to talk to arsenal. Bank two, three, and four are all on still D minor. I then went into the second pad bank and started setting up different sections going to different channels. How I did that is one, edit pads, more, and I basically just changed the MIDI channel here and went through this section of pads, changed them to two, this section of pads, changed them to three, in bank C, this section of pads, I went to MIDI channel four, this is also MIDI channel 4 because I wanted to set up a pad, so I wanted more than one octave. And pad D, this section is MIDI channel 5 and MIDI channel 6. In the controller section, I set that up by going to the controller UI, hit the mapping button, and initially these were all set to Arsenal. However, I changed the bank B to Huey so I could control Pro Tools from this section. And then I made sure to save my preset. All I did was add a slash and a PT to the end of D minor by edit name, and then I picked an empty slot, which at the time was 26, which was above G minor, and hit save and saved it into that slot. It's very important you save this because if you lose power or disconnect, you'll lose all your work. Now let's see how I set up Pro Tools. Let me go to the mix window. And you'll see that I actually have a lot of tracks going right now. You might be wondering how I have so many tracks going out of one controller. I'll show you. Track one is the Loved Up kit, which is going out Trigger Finger Pro MIDI 1. And any of the principles that I show you in Pro Tools apply to most other DAWs. Basically, just change the input channel from the Trigger Finger Pro to match the section of the Trigger Finger Pro that you want to control the instrument you're putting on that channel. So I have my drums here. You might be wondering why the kick was going off, because actually in Arsenal, and air drums within Arsenal, I have the kick that I'm using on four on the floor going out an output bus, heading into the aux input on this channel from the plug-in, sending out a pre here so that I can duck my bass part with the compressor that's keyed to this compressor in Pro Tools. This kind of just shows you the flexibility you have when you're working with a unit that is purpose-built to live inside of your DAW. You can use all of the mixing functions of your DAW without having to bounce anything out. On MIDI channel 2, I have a bass. So if I go to bank B on the hardware, I have a bass sound. Channel 3, the third channel, I have a lead sound. Another nice thing about being able to use a DAW is you'll see when I hit this, a lot of stuff is happening in the DAW. That's because I have this layer going to one lead, the Bama lead, the Detroit lead, and I also have this going out of Pro Tools because the Trigger Figure Pro can also be used as a MIDI interface to the modular synth sitting behind me going back into Pro Tools so I can use the Pro Tools effect because this is going to a delay. So I have three instruments layered right now going off on the same channel. On this channel, which is leading by MIDI channel 4, I'll go to the third bank, which is the pad. I have a pad that I can use both octaves for and do all kinds of recording there. In the next bank, in the channel in Pro Tools, which Trigger Finger Pro MIDI 5 is going to, I have another bass line. And lastly, channel 6, this top section, I have going to another pad that's being controlled by an LFO. So now you've seen the setup, let's start sequencing. 
the first thing I'm going to do is X out of that UI and load a sequence that I'm going to overwrite. I already uploaded the sequence to Arsenal, so it's safe, and I'm okay to just blow it away. So I'm going to go to Sequencer, Edit Velocity, and Clear All. I've just eliminated that sequence. I'll hit Play to make sure. Nothing's playing. So now that I'm here, I'm actually going to start with the baseline and go to the fourth bank. And I'm just going to set up like an arpeggiated bass. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to duplicate that into all four bars. And because this is a monophonic synth, I'm going to do something that might add a little bit of fun to it. So I'm actually going to go to the fifth above that. And so I have a nice cool effect and a cool arpeggiated bass right now. I'm now going to go to the front, the first bank and start programming some drums. So I'll just start with the four on the floor beat. I'll add some complexity to that. Keep in mind that anytime I could hit record and punch this in, but I want to show you how easy it is to sequence. I'm now going to add just a little bit on top with the layered synth I built with the modular. So I'm going to pick this note and have this hit. Have this hit on. And let's top it out. And because I have a pad, I'll just add a little bit of the pad. So a little bit of groove going there. Right now I'm going to save this to make sure I don't leave it. I'm going to edit the name over what I saved here before. So I'm just going to call this because I'm calling this Shouse. I don't know why, but it was easier than house. Actually, it was a misspelling in Pro Tools and I just owned it. So we're going to continue that. And if you want to get rid of something, just to the symbols and scroll ahead. And there I have that. So, okay, I'm now going to hit save and this is going to override sadness v1, which is good because nobody wants a version one of sadness. So now that I have this loop, what am I going to do with this loop? Well, I have a lot of choices right now. If I want to, I can toggle mute all of the banks momentarily mute all the banks. In next sequence mode, I could hop into another song. I can go to mute and actually just mute certain parts. Solo, just solo certain parts. This is assigned to air drums right now in Arsenal. So you can do all kinds of filter sweeps, stuff like that. But I'm gonna dump this into Pro Tools. I'm actually going to dump this into Pro Tools and go into a next sequence that I already made. So, you'll notice right here that I have a lot of these already record armed, which will be reflected in Bank 2 on the hardware. 
tracks one through four and five through eight. But that's how we're basically monitoring everything. Another reason why I have the modular synth going into Pro Tools is so I can record the MIDI going to the modular if I want to do this again without the Trigger Finger Pro. Another feature that you can both do in Arsenal and in a DAW is if you're running multiple instruments, you can actually transpose your instrument with an arsenal. However, this is a global transposition, so if I transpose one hybrid, it'll transpose them all. So I've actually elected to use the real-time properties in Pro Tools to get these into the proper octave. For example, this bass is actually on the top bank, and because D minor is set up as a scale, I had to octave this down four octaves to actually get it into the bass register where I want it. So right now, let me close the mix window and show you the range window, or the edit window. When I hit play right now, because the Trigger Finger Pro is actually locked to the clock of Pro Tools, when I hit play on the device, it's telling the transport to hit play via Huey, then Pro Tools via clock is telling the Trigger Finger Pro to go. So it's really easy for me to just drop this into Pro Tools. So now that I've created that sequence, we're going to use next sequence mode to arrange a song. How we do that is because you can store 16 sequences on the unit, each one of these sequences corresponds with a pad. So because I sa saved this in sequence 5, this corresponds with sequence 5 here. So when I hit next sequence mode, if I hit 5 right now, it's going to play what I just did. The cool thing about this is you can store 16 arrangements on this or different parts of songs. If I wanted to, I could have verse, chorus, build up, chorus, etc. Or you can have multiple songs all set to different pads. This is helpful if you're arranging and recording this into a DAW or if you're performing live. And performing live, we have a few features up here. You have the win section, and what this means is in sequence, if I hit play here, if I want to go to the next sequence, it will wait until the four bar sequence is done to go to the next sequence in time. If I hit now, this is danger, danger, train wreck time, because when you hit the next sequence, it'll go. It won't care about timing, it'll just jump to it. End bar will wait till the end of the current bar you're in. So if you're in like the third bar and you immediately want to go to your next sequence before waiting to get through the fourth, that's the setting that you want to be in. In sequence, we're back to that, into the sequence. So the next menu item is the timing section, which right now it's set to locked. What locked means is when I go to the next sequence, that next sequence will be playing at the same tempo, swing, and division that my current sequence is in. If I change this to new sequence, when I go to the next sequence, it will play back that sequence as it's saved. So if that sequence has a different tempo, swing, or division, it will immediately jump to that. So be careful when you're in new sequence. The next mode is loop, and what loop does is it's going to tell me what's going to happen when I go to the next sequence. If I'm in loop mode, if I go to the next sequence, it will keep looping the next sequence I go to. If I'm in one shot and I go to the next sequence, it'll just play that sequence to the end of that sequence and then stop. And that's why a lot of times you're performing, you want to stay in loop mode. And those are the general features up here of next sequence mode. So now that we understand next sequence mode, we're actually going to use next sequence mode to drop the track we just did into Pro Tools and incorporate it with a couple other tracks that I did before this tutorial. Just to show you what you can do and how easy it is to get a multi-track into Pro Tools for final mix down or just to keep for safekeeping if you don't have your Trigger Finger Pro or if you're traveling or something like that. So I'm going to get out of next sequence mode and go back to Pro Tools and you'll notice how I was monitoring in Pro Tools is all of these are already record armed and because I'm synced to Pro Tools right now anyway it's really easy to just record arm because when I hit record arm here if I hit play on the Trigger Finger Pro I'm going to be playing my sequence. So I'm going to reload my good friend Shouse and we're going to start with that. You can go in and out of next sequence mode very easily so if I hit next sequence mode and leave next sequence mode I can do all the pad bank muting that I want to do, and it'll still go to the next sequence. You don't have to be in that mode for it to still do it, which is a very nice feature. So I'm going to leave next sequence mode. I'm going to hit play here. You'll see Pro Tools right now is recording all the tracks separately. So there's, no, there's going to be no dropping of stems out of the Trigger Finger Pro, because basically I'm just recording them all real time. So 
let's have some next sequence fun. And there we have a really short performance, all recorded in Pro Tools. I can build on that. I could have kept going. I could have gone to different songs. So that's a really fun way how to use next sequence mode and actually a really intelligent way and logical way to get all of your ideas out into a song. So this isn't just a loop maker. It actually is a song production machine.